Hello again, this time we're going to learn about the OCaml list module. Uh, the OCaml list module has a large number of, uh, uh, of functions that are ready uh, for us to use and to uh, exploit. If you remember, we need to go to the OCaml system. The OCaml system, we've seen this before. As you can see here and then, uh, we have a list of modules at the very bottom. I hope you can still remember this. If you go to the bottom, we have index index of modules, and then they are uh, sort of sorted alphabetically. And then we can go to L and list. Now we have list operations. Some functions are flagged as not tail recursive, so rec a tail recursive function uses constant constant stack space if you remember that while a non the recursive function uses stack space proportional to the length of its list argument which can be a problem with very long lists yes sir if you remember how a recursion works and we loop through the the, the the stack and then we compute the value and then we sort of go in the opposite direction to pop the stack and sort of uh, retrieve the value that we compute for tail recursive we carry the result with us every time we recurse every time we loop or every time we iterate so we don't have to pop the stack and go the opposite direction anyway check my previous two or three videos and I'll, uh, I'm sure you'll understand what tail recursion is uh, now we have a large list of function as we said before we have a function called length returns the length or the number of elements in, in a list notice it's actually polymorphic even here uh, that's the list module how it's defined if you remember when we explained how we can have our own modules before in the OCaml tutorial videos um, we have the function head returns the first element of function tail tl returns the uh, remaining part of the list except the first element if the list is empty then it raises the failure tail exception here if the list is empty it raises the failure head exception and we have nth if you remember we implemented function element at before that is already there for the OCaml list we have function called nth and we pass it um, a list and an integer value and then rev to reverse a list append to append two lists receives two lists and returns a new list rev append it uh, reverses l1 and concatenates it to l2 so we, if we use the first one uh, what it does is it reverses l1 and appends it to l2 this is equivalent to list.reverse l1 and l2 this is the appending of a list as you know as we saw before this is this and this are equivalent anyway concat concatenates a list of lists now and then flatten to sort of um, flatten a, a list of lists. Let, let's have a look at, at some of these functions. So let me go to my top level as you see here. Hopefully I won't uh, make this video too long. If it gets more than 10 minutes then I'll stop and record another one. So I'm in my um, top loop. I remember everything you do in your top loop or top level you can do it in your code. I'm using it just to demonstrate. Let me just have a list. Let L equals, for example, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes. By the way, you can have that even for the last element. That's not a problem at all. Now, I can either open module list and use the functions directly, or can I can use the fully qualified name with a dot notation and call a function. So let's have a look, for example, at... We've seen head and tail, so let's have a look at length of L and it has nine elements uh, let's have a look at nth so it receives a list and integer number so list list to nth and then we give it L and say 4 element number 4 is 5 because we start at 0 so 0 1 2 3 4 uh, rev to reverse a list so we can say list this is quite useful that rev I believe we had a function our own function to reverse a list but list.rev l and it returns a reverse of the of the list so opposite order um, 
rev append let's have another list let's say we have another list l that's l and let's call it ll maybe and equals 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 and then um, we can have append list list dot append and then l and ll returns a new list and it's actually the same as this and then rev append so let's copy and paste that list dot rev append l and ll i'm sorry i need to say that so basically what, what happens now is it reverses the first one and keeps the other one in the right order as you can see it has another look so it reverses only l 9 8 7 da 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 and then 10 11 so it only reverses the first list as you can see and then concat it concatenates a list of lists so let's have a list of lists yes you maybe you haven't seen this before yeah as we said before okay lists are polymorphic the elements can be of any type so we can have a list of lists or we, or we can have a list of list of lists and it can be nested to any uh, depth you want so let's have a look for example uh, let's call it ls for example and say this is a list of lists maybe you can say maybe l and ll because these two are uh, lists of integers and then we can have maybe for example 16 17 18 I hope that makes sense now we have three lists inside this list it's a list of lists these two these two are lists already so I don't have to copy and paste this I just put their names variable names and then this is a third list here and you can see here the list now it's actually int list list so it's an integer list of lists that's the first list second and the third and what this function does is concat we pass it a list of lists and it flattens the list inside it i.e. all these lists now are open expanded and they will become their elements will become elements of the parent list yes so this will be gone this will be gone uh, the square brackets basically the inside ones they will be gone the internal ones and the list will be flattened it only flattens one level by the way I think uh, so concat and flatten we can say list dot concat ls and as you can see now um, it becomes a list of int so these are flattened are gone and we have list dot flatten which does the same thing I'm sorry it does the same thing it flattens a list as the name suggests now these iterators they are very very important and therefore I'm going to uh, just go over them quickly now and do them or give them um, a separate video in fact okay let's skip them and let's focus on maybe list scanning so we're trying to for example check whether a list exists in I'm sorry an element exists in the list or not list dot exists checks if at least one element of the list satisfies the predicate P so P needs to be predicate yes that is it returns P applied to a1 ie to the first element or P applied to the second element or P applied to the third element and so on and so forth and it checks whether at least one element satisfies that so what's a predicate a predicate is sort of like a condition so let's try for example and see list dot exists and then let's check for example our um, our L for a predicate which says for example the element is larger than 5 and it should return uh, true or false I'm sorry uh, no it returns uh, uh, no we I actually yes 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 we need to have an anonymous function fun I for example and say I is larger than 5 and then we pass it L and as you can see now it returns true because the elements of L many of them are more than 5 so L now you see we have 6, 7, 8 and 9 so at least one of them satisfies the predicate notice now how I'm using the anonymous function I'm saying fun i, i now is every element of L because this is applied to every element of L and then 
inside it I just use I as a predicate I can say for example I equals 5 or less than 5 or any sort of condition that I want to have but notice how I'm using the anonymous function that we learned before during our um, Okama tutorial videos uh, so that's exists um, exists to same as list for all. Let's, ha let's have a look at for all. For all checks if all elements of the list satisfy the predicate P. So the difference between for all and exists that exists looks looks for at least one element, whereas for all, all the elements need to satisfy the predicate. So let's try it. List dot for all. I just wanted you to learn the functions from the uh, list module and to use the anonymous functions. So if I use this anonymous function it'll be false because some of them don't satisfy the predicate but if I say the predicate is for example i is larger than zero then yes that's true all of the elements satisfy that so the result will be true and if you have a second look at l all of them are larger larger than zero I hope that makes sense these are very useful functions for all exists for all two exists two so this is telling us that the same as list dot exists but for two argument predicates so we have two argument predicate ie the uh, is exactly the same for example here exists but two now and we have two elements for the angle so we have i and j and then we can say for example um, for two argument predicate Ah yes, and it applies for two lists. So the first argument is from the list. The second argument, is the first argument is from the first list, and the second argument is from the second list. And what that means is we need to have the lists to be of the same length. So if I say i is larger than j, what this does is it'll find, it'll check for at least one case where an element in the first list is larger than the corresponding element in the second list. So let's say for example first list is 2, 4, 6 maybe and the second list is for example 4, 6, 8. Remember lists need to be of the same length. What, what this does is it returns false um, because 2 is not larger than 4 4 is not larger than 6 and 6 is not larger than 8 remember it compares the corresponding elements and just to demonstrate if the second list is larger i.e. has more elements than the first one then what we'll have is an exception invalid argument in this function likewise for the for all but now for two functions I'm sorry for two lists and it does uh, exactly the same thing as we learned for the for all but now for two lists rather than one list. Mem checks whether uh, uh, an element exists in a list or not. So now notice that some some functions uh, they have the list as the third variable, some other functions they have the element or the one that we want to use to check as the first variable f the, f the first variable or the first parameter. List.mem whether it exists or not, let's say for example three that's the element I want to check and maybe LL and returns false because it doesn't exist in LL that's LL where is LL that's LL no that, that's LL yes three is not there and maybe we can use it with L and L does have three so it'll be true uh, just quickly to show you for all two so we are happy remember the exists looks for at least one element whereas for all all of them needs all of the elements need to need to satisfy the predicates so let's do for example list dot for all two and then the predicate now is two arguments so function maybe maybe x and y enough of the i and j's and then we can say for example x equals y what this means is that every element of the first list needs to be equal to the corresponding element in the second list so if I do it like that this will return true if I say for example 2 2 and 3 this will be false because the first element here doesn't equal the first element there and therefore we have false so for all is for all the elements and exists for at least one element the, those are the functions we'll have a look at 
list searching or maybe you can actually have a look yourself at the list searching um, association list these are quite important the reason is uh, that if you learn these I started with lists purposely if you learn these you'll be able to apply the same thing for other for other data structures uh, in the coming video I will be covering these um, iterators we, because they are quite important iterate, iterate i, map, map i and the folding functions I'm gonna stop here, it's been more than 10 minutes I think thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time